Hi, George here, and welcome to the new HTG Photo channel, where I'll be posting all of my photo videos on my Photoshop Elements, Photoshop Affinity Photo, but no more gaming. This channel is gaming free. I'm leaving that over at HTG George. And today we'll be talking about the 10 things that are important for somebody who's brand new to Photoshop Elements to really understand. Now, there'll be some tips and tricks in here if you're familiar with Photoshop Elements and you wanna watch this anyway. As always, I do go into a bit of detail at times, so take a look through, see if you've missed anything in here. I'm sure a lot of this will be familiar for most of my followers, but there will be some new stuff in here hiding as well. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about, and again, this is for people who are brand new to Photoshop Elements, and that is that the program actually has three parts. I kind of think of it as three, even though Photoshop Elements also has three different ways of looking at it up here. The first two parts are this, this is the editor, and I do all of my work here in the editor, and the organizer, where you can organize your images. You can use the two separately, you can use the two together. They work hand in hand very well, but you don't have to use them both. I just use the editor over here. I just do my organization in a different way, and I don't use the organizer. Let's take a fast look at that. There's a button right down here. Let's bring up our organizer. There we go. And it's just a way to organize the projects that you're working on, organize your imagery. I don't talk much about the organizer here on my YouTube channel, but I do cover this extensively in my Photoshop Elements training course. If you want to find out more about that, I'll put a link for that down there in the description. But on YouTube, I stick pretty much just to projects. Let's just get this out of the way here. Okay, so that's two. A third way, a third program, if you will, is up here under the File menu and open in Camera Raw right there. It doesn't matter what you open up in here, you can also edit non-raw images if you want to, and it's very good for that as well. But as you notice here, it is a floating window over here. It's actually a separate program that kind of links into Photoshop Elements. So I think of Photoshop Elements as having three parts, the editor, the organizer, and the camera raw editor, which we see right here. And again, I cover this extensively in my training. All right, let's just get this out of the way. There we go. There are those three main parts. And as I mentioned, the editor itself also has three separate ways of working with it, and that's up here at the top. I almost always work in expert mode. If you want to do some special things, there are some guided edits, and these will walk you through the process of doing things such as object removal and cropping photos, things like that. It'll walk you through this, and I have a lot of videos about how to use this. And there's also the quick mode here, which basically simplifies the whole interface, making it very, very easy. If you're brand new to the program, this is a real easy way to start in and just kind of get your feet wet, almost like what that penguin is doing right there. So it's a real simplified toolbar, left-hand side, and the right-hand side, what I normally recommend is just to work from the top down to the bottom. And the top part, the very top part here is Smart Fix, and it kind of works okay here. It's not great. I'll be talking about these auto fixes just a little later in this video. But here's our exposure. And the nice way about working with this is you can just roll over these images over here on the right hand side and you can see the effect. Your current one is right in the middle and see if this makes any improvement. Now see, these are pretty big jumps though. If you want finer control, you can do the finer control over in expert mode. And again, almost all my videos on my YouTube channel are done in expert mode right there. Okay, the second thing is where to find your tool options and the photo bin. And those are right down here. Notice at the bottom I have the photo bin showing and you see my little photo right down here. If you pull your mouse right over here, you can kind of see it will pop to a double arrow. A little hard to get sometimes, but you can pull that up and actually increase the size of this area down here, the photo bin area, if you have a lot of things showing. Right now this is set to show open files or I can choose to show files selected in the organizer. As I mentioned, the organizer and the editor work together as a team on a lot of things, but you don't have to use them together. Let me just pull this back down again. It's a little hard to grab that sometimes, but you can do that. Now you find the button for this at the very bottom left-hand corner. Here's the photo bin button right there, hiding it and showing it. Sometimes if you want your largest image on your screen, just hiding that is a way to go. You can then maximize your photo in your work area by using the Control Zero keyboard shortcut, and that maximizes it in the viewing window. If I bring my photo bin back again, so it's kind of cropped off. Same thing, control zero, and it refits to fit in the visible work area. Now the other way of working with this bottom section, right below our main work area, is the tool options. And this one almost always pops up. 
If you're over here on the photo bin and you change to a different tool, like here's the gradient tool, here's a paintbrush tool, the tool options automatically pops up, giving you your standard options for that tool. In most cases, I will leave this setting. If I'm working with multiple images at the very beginning of a project, maybe over here at the photo bin with my multiple images showing down here. But as soon as I begin working, I'll be over here with the tool options showing down below. So those are two things to know about here when you're working on a project. Photo bin, left-hand side right here, is kind of like a little mini organizer for any open files that you have. Let me just open up something else in here quickly. And here's from the last project I did. And notice now I have two things showing and I have two images down here in the photo bin. Notice that this one came in as a floating window. This is an option. And this is the third thing I want to talk about here inside of Photoshop Elements, a third important thing. And that's using floating windows. These are called document windows. And there are two ways to work with them, either docked, like we have back here, that one is docked, or floating. And you can actually go back and forth. This is the way that Photoshop itself always works, but Photoshop Elements is an option. Take this plot up here to the top, it's gonna to snap in place, it now runs as a tab. So here's my first tab, here's my second tab. But if you want to see both of your images at the same time, you can do that by floating your window, just drag it down like that and have it as a floating window. And I can do things like take this background here, drag it over into here, easily work between two images. There's a lot of reasons why you may want to have floating document windows. Let me show you where the option is for this one. This is one of my standard settings I always set. Whenever I upgrade to the next version of Photoshop Elements, I always do this as the first thing. And this up here underneath the edit menu and come down here to preferences right here and then over in general, and it's these two check boxes here. Normally, the bottom one is checked and the one above it is not checked. So what you wanna do is to check that one so it says allow floating documents in expert mode and also enable floating document window docking. So make sure these are both checked and then you can dock or undock your windows as you like. You then have your floating windows. When I'm working on just one image, I'll usually go ahead and dock that image to get the full window here to work in. And if I need to work between two images at the same time, then I'll float those documents. And again, all you have to do is just grab that tab up here, pull it down, it floats, put it back up again, and it's docked. And that brings us to number four on my list of things to know when you're just starting out here in Photoshop Elements, and that is expert mode and working in expert mode right here. Again, we have quick, guided, and expert. Frequently, when you first load Photoshop Elements, it's going to default over to the quick setting right here. So all you have to do is go up here to the middle menu, click on expert, and you're back into expert mode. And the reason why you want this mode is because you have access to all of the tools, all of the options available here inside of Photoshop Elements. Let me just show you that. If I go here to quick mode, notice that the tools left-hand side has really been minimized. Just a few tools to use in here, not much, some of the most important possibly, but it's really minimized left-hand side. Right-hand side, I don't have any panels over here, no layers panel. I have some effects right here, some basic effects. I have textures, but just a few. And I have frames, but just a few. And then back to adjustments. So it's really minimized on what you can do. Now I do have access to our menus up here. So our menus are still working. Of course, as you can see right in here, it looks just fine. But our standard tools have been minimized. And if we go over here to expert mode, notice how the tools panel now has all of the tools and it's a lot more, about three times as many as you have in the quick mode, maybe a little bit more. So all of our tools are available, left-hand side. We have our photo bin at the bottom. We have our tool options at the bottom, giving us all of our tools. We have our layers. We'll be talking about the layers panel in our next little segment. Very important when you're working on more advanced editing. We do have effects, but we have all of our effects over here, not just a limited number. We have the filters menu, a different way of working with filters. It's kind of nice. I normally just go to the menu though. We also have our styles, and there are a lot of styles in here. All of our graphics, this is where we have our backgrounds. We saw again, just a small handful of these over there in quick mode. We now have all of our backgrounds all of our frames, there's a lot of frames as you can see in here. If I scroll down, there's just hundreds of frames, loads and loads. And we also have our graphics and our shapes and our text. So when you're in expert mode, you have access to everything that the program has, not just the few things that you're shown over here in quick mode. So again, quick mode is real nice if you're just beginning, as I mentioned earlier, 
But if you want the power of Photoshop Elements, then you really have to be working over here in expert mode. Let's now take a look at number five on our list of top 10 things to know if you're brand new here to Photoshop Elements, and that's the Layers panel right-hand side. Now this is the finished image from the last project I did. Let me just close that down and I'll open up the actual working file, which is right here. And I'll stock that, there we go. As the image looks the same, but it's separated into layers, into distinct layers. And this allows me to create this imagery here where I have the background fading from a blue into our photo. I also have placed this guy on top of a different background right there. I did that using layer masks and that's over here. Let me just disable that. There's the original background and enable that. Here's the new background. So all these more interesting tricks and ways of working with Photoshop elements to do this stuff, you really have to have your layers available. Now I have whole videos about how to do layers and I'll be updating all of those for this new channel here as we go. One of the first things I'll be doing on this new channel is updating my most popular videos from the old channel. So all that information will be over here. So you won't have to go digging around the old channel to find that stuff. Layers really makes it much, much easier to do, even makes it possible to do some of these more complex images and more complex tricks that you'll want to do here inside of Photoshop Elements. So learning layers, very high on my list of things that you should try to learn early on when you're just starting out with this program. Okay, let's move on to number six in the 10 most important things to learn if you are a beginner here to Photoshop Elements, and that is working with selections. Now for me to create this background here and separate the background out from the foreground using that layer mask, I had to make a selection around this person right in there. Now there are lots of ways of making selections. And again, I do this and I cover this in a lot of my videos. And I'll be doing a new video here very shortly on this new channel, all about selections. But basically you're using your tools over here, left-hand side. These are your selection tools aside from the first one there, that's your move tool. And then we have our basic marquee tools. These are selection tools, making selections that are either rectangular or elliptical. You see options right down there in our options panel at the bottom. Or we have our lasso tools in here. There are three lasso tools, regular, magnetic, and the polygonal. Different reasons to use each one of these different tools. And of course, the ever popular magic wand, which occasionally is good, but it's not always the best choice. It doesn't tend to give you the best edges. But there are some options for that as well. Down in the options, we have five of these, as you can see here. We have the quick selection tool, the selection brush tool, the regular magic wand tool, the refine selection brush tool, and right down here, the auto selection tool. And again, different reasons to use all of those. And I'll be updating my older video on how to use the selection tools again here very shortly on this new channel. But real fast, let me just hide everything else here. We'll just do that and I'll bring this up on top. There's one more selection tool if you have a newer version of Photoshop Elements. And that's up here under Select. And we have Subject. Now for this to work, let's go over here to our layers. Make sure you're on the correct layer. Just click on your layer. You can see that you can move between layers just by clicking on your layer. So here's the correct layer. Select and Subject. And then Photoshop Elements goes in and looks for the subject and will then select that out. And this works great if you have obvious separations between your background and your foreground. It can find those and it does a great job most of the time. There's some problems with this. It's not always perfect. The edge up here may not be perfect. And that's where we can come in and clean the edges up a little bit. One of the nice things about selections is you're not stuck with just the one tool. If I use subject select, I can go over here and use a different tool, bring my options up, and I can do more with my selection down here. Or I can change the magic wand or the marquee I keep this selection and then I can add or subtract from that selection using my tools down here. Now, one thing which I like to do a lot when I use these subject select is then to come back in and use refine edge. And that allows me to get in and clean this edge up a lot more. I recommend using a feather of about one pixel. Sometimes two, if you have a real large image, but one is just enough just to soften up that edge, just a hair and make it a little more smooth. You don't want to go too high in that or you'll get a big, faded area in here, which doesn't look very good. Now you can zoom in while you have something selected. I'll grab my magnifying glass, the zoom tool up here. Let's just zoom in. And I have a couple of problems in here and you can see them right now. It didn't grab the background through the glasses. It didn't spot that. And there's some of the hairs aren't really grabbed as well as they could have been. That's where you want to use the refine edge tool. Again, grab any of your selection tools and you'll see that refine edge. 
click on that, it brings up our little pop-up window here. This has its own brush. There we go. For this video, I'll leave this all at the default settings, which in most cases is just fine. There's the brush size. You can see it on his forehead right here. And that's set down here in the options panel. That's 35. And then simply brush right over the edge that you want to have cleaned up. And then Photoshop Elements goes in and takes a more careful look at that edge and does a cleaner, tighter section. Now in here, I can actually pull this in a little bit and it should find that section that we're missing in there and did a pretty good job of that. It's not perfect. I'm seeing a little bit of the glasses kind of in there or it's not quite right. We can fix that later if I was taking this clear to its finish. But this is a real nice job of coming in and cleaning up your edge. Now, the way that this works is that it actually gives you a very slight gradient in here. And sometimes that needs a little bit of cleanup, something which I cover and I'll be covering again in my video all about using selection tools. When you're ready to go, just click on OK. We can go to either selection, which I'll be doing here, or new layer with layer mask. That's what I did up there. And it just gives me a cleaned up selection, as you can see right in there. So I'll do Control-0 to go back to fit screen. And very important on these more advanced projects to know how to work with and use selections that along with the layers and your blend modes right here and a couple of other things are the basis of almost everything you'll be doing here inside of Photoshop Elements. Whether you're doing just photo restoration or you're doing merging several images together into a photo collage or photo merge or doing more advanced artistic work, you'll have to be using these selections. And again, keep an eye on this channel and I'll be doing a whole video all about selections here very quickly. Okay, with that, let's move on and take a look at number seven in our list. And that is those blend modes that I just mentioned right over there. I'm just going to hide this layer and I'll deselect that. Okay, let's talk about our blend modes. I'm gonna bring our guy back in again. Here we have him on this blue background and make sure you're on the correct layer right here. And what these do, it allows you to blend one layer into the layers in behind it, whatever is visible behind it to be blending into those. We have normal and it works just like that. Dissolve gives you a dissolved edge. It's kind of hard to see here. If I zoomed in, you actually could see the dissolve. It gives you a little bit of a pixelated effect right along an edge. I almost never use that effect. I'll do control zero back to fit screen. Then we have some here that are going to be adding the layers together. This one brings back in and just darkens the background based upon your foreground coloration. Next one, multiply. Notice how the foreground has become much more monochromatic in this case. But again, it's blending your two layers together. Color burn, linear burn, and darker color. And notice here that anything that is darker than the background has been brought into the background. Anything lighter than the background has not been touched. And there are different reasons why you would use all of these. And there's darkening sections, lightening sections, some real special effects stuff right down here, including changing just the hue, changing just the saturation. So saturations match changing the color just by itself or changing just the luminosity. A lot of reasons why you want to be using different blend modes. I did a video all about this recently, but that's on the other channel. So I'm going to update that video again very shortly here and get it over to this channel as well. So all of my important videos I'll be redoing here on this channel, but very useful. And the quality of my work, my personal work began getting a lot better once I learned how to use the different options here in the blend modes right up here. All right, next up, we have our auto adjustments. I mentioned this back when I was talking about the quick way of working here as opposed to expert and there's smart fix option right here. I personally don't like the auto settings. And the main reason is that you don't have any fine tuning control on those. It applies a setting and you're stuck or you're very limited on what you can do. Let me just show you how that works. Go up here to the enhance menu and all of your auto stuff is right up here. Sometimes these work. The Smart Fix tries everything, your tone, your values, your contrast. It tries all that stuff right here and your color correction. And sometimes it does a great job, sometimes it doesn't. But it's kind of hit and miss. If I click on Auto Fix, there we go. That was the Auto Fix being applied. But I also can't make any adjustments. I can't fine tune that. I'll use the Control Z keyboard shortcut to back up. That's another very important one to learn about. It's the same thing as going up here to Edit and Undo. Same option. It's just Control Z for undo. Okay, let's go back up here to enhance. There are quite a few of these auto settings in here. Auto smart tone, auto levels, auto contrast, auto haze removal. This one actually works out pretty well and it takes out haze in landscape shots. Auto color correction is usually wrong. Auto shake reduction sometimes works out well if you have a little bit of blurring because you have a handheld shot. Sometimes this will improve things a little bit. 
auto sharpen I don't like, and auto red fix can work out very well. Now, everything that you can do in here, you can do someplace else with more controls. For instance, down here we have adjust color. That's our auto color correction right here. And in adjust color, we have several different options on how to adjust the color, and all of those have additional options as well. So we can control exactly how it's working. Lighting right here. This is the same thing as auto levels up there. We have our levels right down here, for instance. There's shadows, highlights, great way for working with photographs. Brightness, contrast, I rarely use this any longer. It's an older way of doing this. I now use levels most of the time. You can come in and do a little bit of an adjustment of your auto smart fix up here, but it's not much of an adjustment. We can colorize. There we go. You'll find colorize also over in the guided edits. Here's our haze removal with more control. This is the one that I will normally use. Here's our sharpness adjustment. And again, I'll be using this instead of the auto sharpen. And then down here, here's the shake reduction. And again, I'll be using this instead of the auto reduction. So these are all okay. If you're in a hurry, go ahead and give it a try. Keep that undo, edit undo, or control Z keep or shortcut ready to undo the auto adjustment if you don't like the effects. But if you have just a moment or two more, and almost everybody does anything that you're doing, you'll have that additional moment. I recommend coming down here, bypassing all the auto stuff, and come down here and use some of these controls that give you more adjustments. For instance, on the adjust lighting and levels right here, I can adjust the levels for my darks, my midtones, and my lights separately, and also the output levels. This is how black it gets. This is how white it gets. So I have a lot more control in here using one of these as opposed to using this auto adjustment, which has absolutely no controls or adjustments to it. So as I said, I almost never, actually I never use these except for maybe the red eye. This is just a fast way to do that. We talked a little bit about layer masks and we see a layer mask right here, which is masking out the background of this portrait. Let's right click on that and disable. There we go. It's masking out that. And I'll show that again. And you can see up here, where it's black, it's hiding that background. And that's basically what layer masks do. They show our high content on a background. Let me show you a real basic example of how this works. I'm just going to hide that layer completely. I'll come down to this layer here, our blue layer, and I'll grab a regular marquee and I'll just make a little marquee like that. So I have a selection inside of here, this area inside is selected, everything outside is not selected. We can now hit the layer mask button, which is right up here, hit that. And that makes a layer mask. And you can see how it works. Where it's white, it's showing the contents of that layer. And where it's black, it's hiding the contents of that layer. And that allows us to put a picture in behind to show through that clear area. This kind of checkerboard pattern, that's how Photoshop Elements shows a transparent area. So if I show our layer underneath, there we go. We're now seeing that area in behind, the blue area. And that's controlled by that layer mask. And you can easily see that again, Black hides, white shows. So if I take a black paintbrush, here regards our paintbrush, here's some black paint. And we'll set the opacity to 100%. Let's make sure on our layer mask side, you see that by looking for that light blue outline. And then I paint into the white area. And wherever I paint black, I can actually see through into what's in behind. Now you can go a little bit further on this. Let me just do a control Z, keyword shortcut to undo. That's again, the edit and undo, which is control Z. I change my opacity in here, I set this to about halfway, and I paint in here with a 50% gray. Notice I'm getting a transparency, but it's a 50% transparency. It's not a full transparency. And that is how that layer mask above works. I'm going to delete this layer mask, right click, and let's just delete that. Bring our layer in above here. So you can see what I'm doing up here with this layer mask is I'm going from black on the left-hand side to clear on the right-hand side with a gradient in there. And that is hiding that landscape picture over here, left-hand side, showing the blue and behind, and then showing the landscape completely on the right-hand side and hiding what's in behind that with that layer mask, black and white. This is one of those things I use all the time in my Photoshop Elements projects here on YouTube. Layer masks are vital to doing and working with more complex imagery and ideas. So make sure you learn about how to use layer masks. Let's now take a look at something which is really nice here in Photoshop Elements and one thing which separates this out from a lot of other programs and that's that it comes with free content. Let me just hide some layers in here. We'll show just our background layer right there. There we go. And you can find the free content down here, bottom right hand corner where it says graphics. Click on that and that brings up the graphics. And you can organize this by different areas, by activity, color, event, but I always leave mine at by type, which is the easiest. 
So we have backgrounds, frames, graphics, and shapes, these four areas. And text is simply effects that can be applied to text. It's just kind of a shortcut to doing some fancy effects. So we have our backgrounds first right here. There are a lot of backgrounds. Now here's our current background. If I come down here and I click on something else, let's say I take this picture right here, click on this. It then applies that picture back here to layers. And you can see here is our background layer right here, our new background layer. If I hide this one, we now have this in as the background. And I can change this as often as I want. Let's go back here to graphics again. Let's try to something else. I'll just grab this one, put that load in. And there we go. Here's our new background. So it's that easy to change these backgrounds. Again, back to our layers. And there's the new background. So it's replacing whatever I have on that background layer with that new content over here from graphics. Now there's a lot of this available here. You see how long the scroll wheel is. I just keep on going down, 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 loads and loads and loads of backgrounds in here. Now when Photoshop Elements is first installed, it will give you a small selection of these that are already downloaded to your computer, but it's not gonna be downloading everything. That would just take up far too much space on your hard drive. You don't really want that. What you wanna do is have the ones that you want to use on your computer. Everything else is stored online, but it's easy to get to. Let's just come down here and find something which is kind of nice. There we go, kind of a cloudy kind of thing here, a torn paper. Yeah, clouds. Notice this blue triangle upper right hand corner. That means that this one has not been downloaded yet. In order to get this, all you have to do is make sure you have an internet connection. These are already included in your purchase, so you don't need to pay anything extra for this. Just double click on that. It's going to download that to your computer. And there we go. I now have that background. Notice how that little triangle has now gone away. Let's do it over here on this one. Double click on this. That downloads it that fast. And here we go. This is now included on my hard drive. So I don't have to download it a second time, just that first time. And then it's included over here with your installation. So great way to get all kinds of different backgrounds. And I use these a lot. It's just a real easy way. It's actually the best collection of backgrounds I found anywhere, even from online sites. Okay, let's go up here to our drop down list again. We also have the same idea here for frames. There are loads and loads of different frames available in here inside of Photoshop Elements. These again, all of this comes with the program. A lot of these, as you can see, have not been downloaded, that little light blue triangle. If you want that same thing, double click, well then download. Just make sure you have a currently active internet connection to do that and download the ones that you want to use and just leave the rest of them up online so it doesn't take up excess space on your hard drive. Okay, see how these work. I'll just do one here. This one hasn't been downloaded yet. That's a good example. I'll click on that. There's the download. Here it's placed onto the page. If I go back over to layers, you can see it comes in actually as a group right here. That little arrow expands that group. Three parts, frame, text, and the mask. But the way you work with this is just to click in here where it says, click to add photo. Pick a photograph, I'll use that one. Choose place. There we go, and it places that picture right inside that picture frame. There's a lot that you can do with this. You can zoom in, zoom out, readjust. A lot of ways of working with these frames. Just some nice quick framing content in here for your project without having to go to a lot of work. Again, a lot of this stuff is included for free right over here under graphics. Now below that we have where it says graphics, it's kind of graphics, graphics. And these are your standard clip art images. Now this one I'm not that excited about because it hasn't been updated. This has been the same set of clip art here for years. But really, it's so easy to find free clip art now on the internet. It's not that critical any longer. But there are quite a few things in here. And I will use these on occasion. Sometimes I'll use these even in my projects here on YouTube. There's some fun stuff in here. But, you know, just go online. You can find loads of free clip art. And below that one, we have shapes. Now, these look kind of boring. It's just black and white, as you can see in here. Not that interesting. But there are some fun things about these. These can be used as masks and you can place images inside of these masks. One of my more favorite tricks to do is use one of these kind of fun ones in here and put an image inside of that. Let me demonstrate that real quickly here for you. Let's just hide all of this stuff like that. Go back over to graphics. I'll use this one, double click, go to our layers, and I'll just grab the control handles here and let's pull the handles out and make this a lot bigger on our page. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then still on this layer, we have a layer above this and that's our background here. Click on that and then right click on the name and you have create clipping mask. And what this does is it takes whatever's on this layer and puts it inside of the black contents of that layer. And there we go. So we now have this image inside of that kind of random frame. 
That's one of the easy ways to use these different shapes. There it goes. So there's a lot you can do with these things. You can also just paint into them if you want to. You can apply different effects on these and get some really nice imagery happening. You know, even though these look kind of boring when you first examine them, there's a lot that can be done with these different shapes over here. And I'll be using those on and off in my different projects here on the HTG Photo channel. Okay, and that covers what I consider the top 10 most important things for beginners to learn about how to use Photoshop Elements. There's a lot more, of course, to this. Photoshop Elements can be a very complex program. There's a lot involved here. And the best way to learn everything about this program is to get my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I'll put a link for that down in the description. I mention that frequently. It really is the best way to learn Photoshop Elements. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. That does help out my channel a lot. Also, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already and leave a comment down below. I love comments. I like having conversations in the comments. I respond to every single comment that's left. So you'll always get an answer if you ask me a comment down below. Sometimes I'll do a real fast answer in the comments. Other times I may even make a whole new video if I think your comment is important enough to show everybody how something is done. So leave those comments. Great ways that we can collaborate here on what's being shown on this channel. Okay, thanks for watching. Again, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.